My name is Dean, and today I'm going to show you how I make this fluid dynamics act here in Touch Designer. Okay, there's three parts of this that I'm going to do. So the first part is making my input. Uh, that's going to be these circles. The second part is going to be making an optical flow feedback loop. That's going to be the main driver uh, of this sort of fluid effect. And then I'm going to tie it all together with my sort of uh, effect loop um, my coloring and effect feedback loop. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm first gonna make a base just for my my movement source. And this is gonna be, I'm gonna make a simple, uh, as, as you saw, a, um, I'm gonna make a simple instance, instancing uh, network for a bunch of circles. So to get the X, Y locations of those circles, I'm gonna drive that with a noise top. And I'm going to make it not monochrome, but I'm going to limit it to just being 32-bit RG. Um, yeah. And then I'm only going to do uh, five, five different circles. So I'm going to make the resolution five wide, one tall. And so you can see a little better what that looks like. I'm going to go nearest pixels. Here's my, my five pixels. I'm going to animate them. Apps time.seconds in the Z value of my transform. Uh, and I'm going to slow it down by dividing it by, say, 13. And then uh, I'm going to also drop my period down so that way the circles are all doing their own separate things. Okay, so now I've got my, my locations here. I'm going to put that in a null before I transform it to a chop. So I've got my RNG. I can get rid of my B and A. So I've got my, my points here. And then drop those into a null, uh, and I'll call that good for right now. I'll come back to that in a second. Then I'm going to go and start making my circle instances. So uh, these I'm going to have be uh, let's go 0.5, and then bring that into a geometry. Start my instancing in the instancing tab, turn it on, bring in my null, and then for the X and Y locations, I'm going to say RNG. This is way too big. I Maybe I meant 05. That seems better. Okay, and as you can see right now, I'm going the full kind of zero to one, but I want to make this nice for a vertical screen to share um, to share on social. So I'm going to I'm going to do everything in this tutorial uh, nine by sixteen, <clears throat> and so it'll, that'll come up a few different times. Uh, so in order to make sure that this stays within about a 9-16 uh, ratio, I'm going to insert a math operator in here. I'm going to set my, my scope to only be the R value. I'm going to multiply that by 9 over 16. So that should keep, that should keep all my R values uh, here within about that 9 by 16 uh, window. Moving forward, I'm going to make my camera and change my view to orthographic. My origin is gonna be in the bottom left and my width is gonna be that nine over 16 as well. I'm gonna make my render top, not reorder render. And make my resolution 1080 by 1920. I forgot to add my material, so I'm gonna go back and add that as a constant, drag that on material. And now I've got my, my little movements uh, movement sort of so these dots kind of going around. Uh, later, I think I'll get into how I can use the mouse or maybe or even a multi-touch screen to uh, to be the input for what this is. Okay, so got my movement. So the next phase of this, uh, I'm actually going to put this in an alt right now for the future. Uh, so the next phase for this is going to be making my optical flow feedback. Um, and I don't know if I've ever seen anybody else use this method for doing fluid, uh, fluid dynamics, but I found it to be very simple and kind of the, uh, I don't know, it's the, the fastest way I feel like for me to make, make this sort of fluid effect. Um, okay, so I'm going to call this my optical flow feedback. I'm going to add an input inside of here uh, and drag in my movement. Okay. So inside my optical flow feedback, I'm actually going to go into my palette and under tools, I'm going to find the optical flow operator. 
So what this does, if I drag in my input, you can see this is this is taking taking my movement input and comparing frames and based on those frames it is trying to determine the direction that each pixel is moving uh, within those frames and as you can see here i have these nice sharp lines i'm actually going to first take this and smooth it out a little bit so that way i'm not getting such hard edges so i'm going to go ahead and blur blur the input here that way my values aren't so extreme on just single pixels um, Okay, then I'm gonna start building my my feedback loop. So I'm gonna start with the feedback. And then the way this works is I'm actually gonna use this optical flow to then, uh, to, I'm gonna use this optical flow to displace itself in a feedback loop. So uh, bring in the feedback and displacing it with itself. And then I'm gonna add that to uh, what the current feed or what the current optical flow is so that I'm constantly updating drag that back to my feedback and Let's open this in a viewer so we can kind of see what's going on um, Okay, I haven't updated my displace parameters yet. So let's do that so that this makes sense Oh, actually also before I get too far I'm gonna add a keyboard in to reset my feedback for when it gets uh, a little out of control like this so if I connect my keyboard to my feedback pulse, I can hit the one and it'll reset it back to zero. Okay, so in my displace, I wanna change my vertical source. Right now it's by default set to blue, so I'm gonna change that to green. And then the midpoint of my source, the, the way this optical flow feedback works is it doesn't go from zero to one, it goes from negative one to positive one for left to right and up to down. So my midpoint is actually gonna be at zero, zero. And then my displace weight, uh, as you can see, it's, it's displacing it, but it's going Way, way more than I want to every frame. So instead of uh, one and one, I'm gonna actually gonna go way down to 0 0.01. And then if I reset, I should start to be getting closer to what I want. Actually, let's go even further down to 0, 0, 001. Okay, now we're starting to see a little more fluid sort of look to this. Um, and you'll see I'm getting these nice, you know, fluid trails going behind it, but I, I kind of want it to have a spread to it as well as, you know, you get that that watery sort of spread that happens. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to blur in before the displace every, every cycle. And you'll see there I'm already getting something kind of nice. So the fluid, it's, it's kind of moving things out and around and the blur is also helping to sort of clear the frame as well. So it, it'll slowly fade out <clears throat> more and more. Um, and we might come back and tweak that a little more later to make sure it actually fully resets because you don't want this movement to kind of continually keep happening. You, know, you, you, bring, your, you bring your object, your hand, whatever, through the fluid, you want it to sort of go back to, to zero to set um, at the end. So. Let's take this to an out. So now we'll go back to our uh, higher up our network and you'll see I've got my movement going into my optical flow. Uh, and now I'm gonna take this and combine these together in a new base. Oh, not an engine, base. And I'm gonna bring in two inputs and I'm gonna bring in my original movement and my new optical flow. Okay, so uh, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so close this down. Um, so I'm gonna use this to make something interesting looking. So if I'm gonna take my input, I'm gonna first put it through a noise, uh, and then instead of the output being input plus noise, I'm gonna multiply it by the noise. And then I'm gonna give it some color here by saying, don't be monochrome and um, so that it's not so multicolored. I'm gonna pump this period up to like a, a nine or something. Okay, so I've got my noise here. I'm bringing it to a null in case I wanna do anything else before it later. Uh, and let's see, let's move this up. And then I'm gonna start my feedback loop again for this effect. So feedback, let's bring this up. So, and then I'm gonna also do another displace here. And this time I'm gonna displace it with my with my feedback, uh, my optical flow feedback. This sets kind of the same parameters here. So my midpoint, or setting my vertical source to green, my midpoints to zero again, and my displace weight. This one, 
Let's try it a little higher at first to see what that looks like. So 0 0.1, um, we're already starting to see it do a little something we want. Um, and okay, I uh, and then I want to do an over here at the end. So I need to go back and change my noise alpha output to be what the input is. So that way I get that nice alpha channel. Um, and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna render this over. Actually, sorry, gonna be this one over the top of my feedback and I'm going to use that feedback or the over to drive the feedback as well. I'm going to do the same keyboard input to reset my feedback. So now I can start start fresh. Okay, so I can uh, start to see what I'm getting here. I'm going to go ahead and make my output and then view it so I can keep track as I change things of what's happening. Okay, so I think I want to pull this I want to pull this displace weight down at least 10 times. Let's see what we're getting there. Let's go even further. Let's go. Let's go all the way down to 1,000th. Okay, so now we're really starting to get some some fluid effect happening. Um, let's see a couple things we can do here. Right now, as as you can tell, we're we're not we're not losing any of this color. After a while, it sort of fills up the screen which maybe that's an effect you'd want, just keeping that sort of color going. Um, a couple of things we can do, we can add uh, a level after the fact, after we do the displace. And then uh, there's a couple ways to do this. I think the most common one is probably this, you know, opacity. We can say we want to bring opacity down in every frame, have it start fading out. You can see, you know, this starts to get more and more transparent. This kind of gets, when it resolves, it resolves down to kind of a grayish color. Sometimes I'll bring up the black level to something something small so it'll slowly slowly fade to black and then also completely to zero so it, it makes sort of a threshold for you. Um, lots of things you can play with there. Uh, you can also add a blur uh, here as well to sort of dissipate things as well. Um, it's good to have a blur like this every once in a while too just to, in case there's any you know hard edge artifact kind of stuff you want to get rid of. Okay, um, so that's the basis, the basics of this effect. I'm gonna say this is my output effect. Um, and then I'm gonna pump that out. So now I've got my, my project here. I'm actually gonna go to my top level project and change this resolution to be correct. So let's do 1080 by 1920. And then now let's actually view this because we are gonna be referencing this panel specifically to add in our, our multi-touch inputs. So let's go back in. And then uh, we're gonna add to our movement, um, we're gonna add to our movement the input from our mouse. And also if we had a multi-touch screen, it would be that. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it over for right now because I'm gonna reuse that instancing network. And then inside the second one, I'm gonna go to the beginning. And instead of using this noise, I'm gonna add in the multi-touch input uh, dat. Uh, and the panel I'm going to reference is going to be this project one. So let's go project one. Let's also include the mouse. Um, so as you'll see, when I, when I click on here, I actually get the, the U and V values as, uh, they relate to this panel specifically. And that's what I want to, in order for the, uh, the circles to show up on the screen or on that output where I'm pressing it. <clears throat> so and if I had a multi-touch screen, this would have a row for each of my input touches and would render out a circle for each touch. So let's convert this over to a dat. The, uh, the output is going to be a channel per column. And then my first row is going to be names. And the first column is values. Okay, so again, here we see when I click, it's really only this first sample that we really are gonna be using on this example, but if we had multi-touch, like I said, this would work. So we go from there um, and let's, let's select out so we can see a little better what we need. So what I'm gonna select from the multi-touch information, I'm gonna choose the select, the U and the V, and then I'm going to use the same math that I that I had last time, except for instead of the red value, I'm going to multiply my ratio by the U value. 
And let's see what this error says. Okay, yeah. So, and then I need to go into my instancing. And now instead of RNG, I have U and V. And you'll see now when I move around on this panel, even when I'm not clicking, it's showing up. That's why I grabbed this select. The select goes to one when I click. So I'm gonna put that in this active, or I need to type it in because it's right here. So now it, you can see up here, it'll show up only when I'm active, when I'm actively clicking on it, which is great for, for things like multi-touch. Or um, this could also be something if you want to do a blob tracking for motion on screen or something like that. It's another another way you could do this. Okay, so now I've got my output showing, showing my mouse. I'm going to make this one a little bigger just so it's uh, more prominent on screen. And I'm going to go out and for my movement, I'm going to add my input from my panel. So now when I draw, I'm getting input from my mouse and I can really have fun playing around with the fluid dynamics here. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of ways you can play around with this to change its effect. You can go in here, you can add more blurs in. Uh, I'm getting sort of these jaggedy sort of effects happening here. Some of that might be resolved by adding, you know, more blurs into different places. So maybe, maybe one at the bottom of this, this network here to, to blur my input a little more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, you could tie this into, you know, a connect with the connect points. You could do some motion tracking on some blob points. Um, lots of different ways I feel like that uh, I've integrated this into different projects. But if you have any ideas or any other ways you want to see this implemented, uh, shoot me a comment or a message and uh, put it in the next one. Thanks.